Hello and welcome to my channel. I finally received my new board from LilyGo and in terms of price this ASP32S3 board looks pretty good and I really like the package. First of all it has a USB-C, it has an output for charging, you can directly connect the battery and also if you disassemble this package you have a magnet on a lower side so you can stick it to something. And also because it has a really cool processor, everything works much faster and in the same time you have a really cool screen and you can make a lot of outputs from this board. For example, if you remove these plastic parts, you can access internal things on the board as the cables. So it looks like a possibility for this board, it's kind of infinite. You can do a lot of stuff and it's quite flexible and at the same time I really like the package and it looks like a final product for DIY. And these types of projects never go off without the coffee. But today I want to start with the test on my first board, which I received based on the ICRP2040, so it's quite easy board. And I think I will just replace my Arduino in my set and disassemble the whole set and just rethink what I'm doing. In initial first test, first of all, I think the Arduino is just crazy outdated old thing and for modern prototyping it's a crazy stupid idea. First of all, for me, at the moment at least, I completely don't care about the memory management, I don't care how fast it works, I completely don't care if I use the proper types of variables, I want things to work extremely dirty and extremely quick. And as you understand, the C language it's not the way to go if you do things like this. The main advantage of this board actually is CircuitPython. First of all, it's crazy cool, I can directly connect it with the USB and with the serial port connected with the USB I can control the board, I can send the comments, I can test the scripts on the live board. I don't need to flash the memory, I just need to save the file on the USB stick and it's alive and running and with a soft reset I already see the new data. And because I'm quite familiar with the Python, it's just easier to develop everything. And if you talk about Arduino, everything is so outdated, your ID is just horrible and the serial monitor also kind of a horrible app there. When I try this new board, I just never want to go back. I think I just get hooked and this is how it will roll from now, at least for the small tests. Positive side, if you want to rewrite everything in C, it's also possible on this board and also you can use some of the libraries which is existing for these sensors. And I kind of really like this approach of flexibility of choosing the platform and this board also have a screen which is easy output directly on the board and I think I will implement some things in future but for now for tests I will only use the output on my laptop because it's just faster to collect data, make plots and experiment on the fly with the board and changing settings and I think I wrote the whole script with the changing of gain and changing of time and automatic collection of the data with the proper structure and with calculation and so on and so forth probably in like two or three hours and in comparison i probably spent few days even like three four days just working with the c and arduino and flashing back and forth and i need a physical board to test some things so the loop of development is just crazy slow for modern worlds and i usually choose speed instead of quality and speed is always wins and quality you can gain up later and it, this is usually not a problem. Especially for this type of applications of pre-market making prototypes I think the quality itself is just a stupid idea to make everything from the beginning in the first shot and make it perfectly correct and you will get stuck in a J curve of development. Probably you will get spent too much time and too much money to develop the thing which probably nobody never will use or it will be outdated on the day of release. I saw it so many times you even cannot imagine. So I'm trying to stick to the modern way to work, be a little bit of agile and try to easily change the things for example, with the MicroPython I can just exchange the things and rewrite the code and it will spend half a day and everything will work again. And using this simple pinboard prototype I can exchange it to this sensor, which is actually no longer available on the website, but it's the same kind of a IC there, you can buy the different board uh, with a different pinout. 
And as a first prototype, I wanna go back a little bit to RGB sensor because it's a little bit more sensitive than the sensor with the spectrum what I used before. And I think I wanna give it a go, which we will discuss a little bit later. As you remember in the previous videos, I cannot gain any type of solid representation of color and the color separation. And the color anyway kind of gets stuck with the magenta blue interaction. So I assemble this prototype on RGB sensor and try to work with it and from there try to see if I can get the meaningful result and if my results actually mean something in terms of practice. And in this video I will try to push my prototype to something useful in a dark room and not only just a mock-up which I measure some spectrums, because otherwise I will never know how I can implement the final setup. I have a few ideas, but for now I think I will just stick with the simplest one and try to recollect the data, don't care really about the final exposure, but also I will collect it, but I want to get the final exposure. And the ratio of the final exposure its actually tricky stuff. And this is my current working setup. And now let's check what we find out last time. So in previous videos, as you remember, we find out that the yellow channel from the magenta separation is not so great and you can see it, but first of all you need to set up the magenta channel and after it you can see the difference in yellow. So this was a kind of a strange thing, especially in this corner. So in the small settings of yellow corrections you cannot see the difference and it's just too small and you lose resolution here and you lose all the capabilities of the tool. So let's go back uh, and from here I make an experiment and make a ratio and with the different ratios I find out that in principle percentage wise the cyan channel create horrible problems with the all colors and I'm still not sure why we use it and why I'm not sure if the filters in the photo hats from the different brands uh, show exactly the same values and exactly the same filters. So the magenta crosstalk uh, kind of looks fine and the yellow crosstalk kind of looks fine. You have a, some crosstalk there but the signals is there and this is a good point. And after this experiment I switched to this new board and make with this board experiment with the color separation. As you can see this setup is quite nice. So I have a one sensor board with the RGB and transparency sensor. And I also have a board with a screen and the setup itself quite neat so I can stack it up and make small tool battery powered and USB-C chargeable and USB-C updatable which you can use in your darkroom. So the disadvantage of this sensor in principle it connects to the RGB limitation as we discussed in the previous videos. We need a little bit more red and not only chopped around uh, 650 nanometers. It's better if you have a little bit more. But I, I thought like okay can we actually sense it? Because after 600 nanometers my signal is still there and I have at least half of the signal. So the downside of all of this sensor is actually this exact crosstalk. My cross reference here not on 600 nanometers, it's a little bit below around 580 and this is limitation of the sensor in our case. If you take a look here between the green and between the blue colors we also have a lot of overlap and both of the filters actually overlapping a lot so it means we cannot really distinguish both of the channels it will move also simultaneously the channel which is uh, green and if you just measure the blue you cannot measure perfectly blue it's anyway cross talking of like whatever percentage here so if you change only blue channel the green channel also will deviate if you change only a green channel the blue one also will deviate and the more significantly because as you can see intensity here is quite different so this is just initial limitations and i thought like yeah okay what the heck let's test it because it was quite simple and easy to run this sensor and after few experiments i find out the few plots with the crosstalk and my crosstalk uh, quite simply almost the same thing what I have with my precisely adjusted sensor for wavelength. 
which I was quite surprised. But in the same time, as you can see, the Cyan range crosstalk quite horrible. It's changing all the channels all the way down. And here I also have a percentage per range on each channel calculated. So this plot is quite relevant to what we saw before. So magenta crosstalk give me some notice that I cannot use the sensor. This was the reason why I actually bought the second one and why I stopped using this one. As you can see, when I change one channel, I also change the second one. So when I change magenta range, I also change the blue channel, so yellow knob, and they almost the same change and I don't see any, any difference in the signal. And kind of the same, happens with the yellow. I have a little bit crosstalk to the green channel from blue channel, so keep in mind this one can work, but the magenta show me kind of a red flag. And I came up finally with this plot. This is actually error, this is not the percentage of range, this is actually counts what I recalculated to the gain in time, and I measure it on the different settings of magenta channel. As you can see, I also have exactly the same separation of the channel and I can use this as a response and I can check it. But in the same time, I have exactly the same curve here and this is a little bit slow in changing and below 60, this whole thing becomes a little bit exponential and after that, this slope changed dramatically color and it's not linear at all. So this is a small conclusion, we kind of can use it but in the same time, I want to check if it will work in a dark room in a real setup and can I see any difference? Can I recalculate something? So in this video, let's try to print something and from there, let's try to move the settings, at least measure something in real life. And now I'm also getting in the problem that I don't really have a chemicals anymore and I urgently need to order a lot of stuff. So it costs pretty money, so if you want to support the channel, subscribe, press the like button, or you can also press thank you button on YouTube. All types of support and community always welcome on this channel. So I will mix up and probably this will be our last goal of the Adox Array 4. So my conclusion, it's quite nice chemistry, quite cheap, but in the same time, in even my conditions, and probably I print just more than the average people, one liter of the solution is definitely too much for the general consumer, especially pre-mixed chemicals. You cannot really store them for a long period of time, and over time I have a sediment in the bottom, but for sure I violate all the rules what is written on the bottle, so basically I think after opening the bottle you can store it no more than like few months or something like this. And I abuse this rule quite horribly, it's actually changed few countries already before it gets in my hand. So my conclusion from this, don't really try to cheap out on the chemicals, make your life a little bit more reasonable. So for example, I end up with this kit, but I think because it's already kind of expired, I a little bit overproduce sprints and sometimes probably I even sacrifice a little bit of quality on my work. So in future I will do exactly the same what with my gloves, if they look bad, I will just throw them away. For today I want to print some good prints with my Kodak 200, my beloved film from the past. This shot made in Munich in the evening light and I really like the simplest composition there and I hope to see exactly the same amazing greenish color and the full depth of this photo what I saw with the scan. And if you think about it, I'm still waiting for my film from the Cibrazalts lab and it's delivered back more than a month. It was developed in February and now, as you can understand, it's almost middle of the March. So I will never use this service again, just because I think in modern times nobody cares about the negative. And for me it's a little bit in reverse. I care only about the negatives and I completely don't care about the scans. Because with each reprint or each rescan, over the time you develop a little bit more, you know a little bit more about the photos, you know a little bit more about the balance of colors, and just your shots became better and better and better. 
In previous video I also cut the new paper and today is a perfect time to test if I have no mistakes and if my paper looks good and works fine and the size also good. So let's choose proper magnification for the shots and make a focus. By the good tradition I always keep the frame and try to show the material also and not only photo because I think the substance on which you print or which you shot is also quite important in my art. Before I thought it's a good idea actually to crop everything and make the simple shots, but now I think the small test strips or small notes in your journal, uneven frame or strange rotation on a shot create a small defects and they create a character on your prints. And sometimes some things you can control and some things you can't and this is just the character of the process what I use for my art. So I hope this developer with a small amount of sediment on the bottom still okay but unfortunately I cannot test it and I don't have a different one. So I still wanna try from Tetonal the solid taps and they probably already have it for C41. And just imagine if you have the same for Array 4. For example, for 250 milliliters, you just drop one tablet in each bottle and everything is fine and everything works. And if you need a one liter, just drop more tablets and this is all recalculations what is required for your process. I also think the dosing in the bottles, it's a little bit stupid nowadays. So you can buy and open the huge bottle and your chemicals getting expired over time and it's not like single shot use and package wise I think it's crazy outdated and in terms of storage it's also not really visible for the modern darkroom in the apartment for example for C41 I don't really like the one liter solution I actually prefer to make a half a liter and with a full half liter you can develop the film or with the 250 milliliters you can develop the film. So it's much better if you have a small bottles which you can just directly transfer and create the solution. And I also think it's really good idea to ship the pure distilled water with it. Because all the time I think people just use the tap water and it can easily ruin all the results of your chemicals, storage, longevity and so on and so forth, change pH. So generally it's a really bad idea. So ideal case scenario, at least for me, will be exactly the same bottles as the Yobo bottles. You deliver them with the water inside for the required amount and you just put or two tablets or two different liquids and your solution is ready for next round. But I think for now it's a little bit of dreams because all the companies doesn't really stick with the modern things and the modern things what I try usually horribly failed especially this package with the prepared C41 chemistry which kind of ruined a lot of my film. So after first test print I found out the good exposure around 10 seconds and I want to print the 10 seconds exposure on F11 with the settings of 6060. And I think for most of the people it will be quite astonishing that you don't need to make any corrections if your development is correct. So if you think about it, your film is kind of developed to be processed with the Array 4 chemistry or scanned with more or less exact settings on the old Fujian Frontier scanner or Norito scanner. So it means if you have a calibration film, you just set up your sensors in the scanner once and the rest of the thing, it's actually not your problems anymore. You can attach some of the corrections on top of the film because film also have a small deviations, but this all corrections will be insignificant. And this is how film photography actually should work. You just ship it in the lab, they develop it with the proper settings, they know the calibrations and they calibrate it every morning and you know that your color calibration strip, which you push up through the whole process, give you the same densities on each channel. If not, you make a corrections with the chemistry in your whole batch. And after that, your service is actually perfect. So you put the film and all the deviations in color, what you have on the film, it's actually deviations in the film storage or different types of film artifacts. And 
this is only one thing what you need to change in a post-production and as you can understand this is really small number of defects but as you know this is actually works only with the film what i developed myself or what i developed in a good professional lab and this is just a simple example how you can easily print things in your darkroom i don't change any settings and this is almost perfect exposure and this is how it should be if you control your process and if you control your craft and unfortunately this is never happens with the film labs and this is why i think the future of film photography is actually in the sensors and in the modifications of your enlargers and the modern way to make enlargers so so far i hope you really like my project and some insights what i gather through working this project forward but let's try to measure something with the real sensor and recalibrate some data First of all, I realized I actually need the ratio between the all three channels and for that I need to collect the data for all of the three channels and make some calculations in the post-production or inside the board. So the script itself which I wrote actually contains of the few functions which is making auto scaling, auto integration time, to put the response from the sensor in the sweet spot. It's not really optimized for speed, but also one measurement takes around few seconds. But I think this is for now not a problem, and my biggest problem is actually strange settings in the output, and additionally the green color of the ideal picture, and because I have too much green in the picture, and it gives me a lot of things to think about. So thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.